Hello, I'm Robert Dean, and this is your daily Bible class. Listen to what it says in Psalm 119. He says, I have done justice. This is verse 121. And righteousness, do not leave me to my oppressors. So here is Ezra. He's just reminding God. He says, God, I've been trying to do whatever you've told me to do, whether it's justice and righteousness. I've tried to follow you with every fiber of my being. I've made a decision that my lifestyle choice is the Lord. He says, so don't leave me to my oppressors. Don't let those who are coming against me overwhelm me today. He says, be surety for your servant for good, and do not let the old proud oppress me. He says, listen, Lord, there are people who are proud, people who are arrogant. They don't understand what I'm all about. They persecute me. They mock me. They scorn me. They look down upon me because I have chosen to serve the Lord. I've decided to follow not the ways of the world, but the ways of God. He says, so, Simply, what I'm asking you to do is to stand behind me. That's what surety means. To stand behind, to authenticate, to be a person who will guarantee the safety of an individual. He says, please do that for good. He says, my eyes fail for seeking your salvation and your righteous word. He says, Lord, night and day I'm reading your word. It's on my heart and on my mind all the time. He says, I'm seeking your word. I want to hear from you today. And that's what the Word of God is really all about. We need to spend time in God's Word every day because it's God's Word for us today, this day. And then there'll be a Word for us tomorrow from the, the Bible as well. He says, and it's your righteous Word, which means it is right for every situation. God has a right Word for your situation right now. He says, deal with me, your servant, according to your mercy, and teach me your statutes. He says, Lord, listen, I understand that I, under, I, I need judgment. I deserve judgment. But what I'm asking for you to do is deal with me with mercy. Now, mercy is the quality that you have every right, every authority to punish someone, to bring judgment upon them. But you choose not to. Instead, you give them mercy and grace. It's kind of like, I pardon you. And that's what God has done with us. He says, and this is what Ezra says, Lord, I, I, I know I deserve this, but would you give me your uh, mercy? And then, while you're doing that, would you mind spending some time teaching me your word? You see, the Holy Spirit found, uh, Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 and 16. He says, he's going to take that which he hears and passes unto us. So today, you have a guarantee that the Holy Spirit, who's the great teacher, is going to teach you the word of God as well. He says, Lord, I am your servant. Give me understanding. Now that was again a decision. He says, Lord, I'm your servant. I'm following you. So I, I want you to give me understanding. I need to understand. I need your wisdom. I need your discernment. I need your view and vision on things. He says that I may know your testimony. Lord, I don't want just to hear about it. I don't want to have a mental assent. I actually want to know your plan and purpose for my life. I am going to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is my spiritual worship. I won't conform to the images or standards of this world, but I will allow that transformation that will come so that I can know the perfect and acceptable of God. That's what Paul said in Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have regarded your law as void. He says, Lord, listen, these individuals that I'm talking about, these persecutors, these oppressors, they think your word is void. It's time for you to act. It's time to show what you can do, O oh God. Years ago, there was a, a group of young people that came to our uh, area in Salmon Arm. And they were ministering down by the Salmon Arm dock. And there was a bunch of young people standing there. And they said, God isn't real. And one of the young people, who was about 15 or 16, says, I will show you that God is real. Now, all the kids around going, oh, be careful. Well, that young man laid hands upon that other young person, and the power of God hit that young person, and they fell over 
right in front of about a hundred young people. And they couldn't get up. They just couldn't get up. And they said, what happened to him? He says, the power of God hit Does anybody else want the power of God to hit him? Well, that little group of young people all of a sudden knew that the power of God was real. Now, that doesn't always happen. In fact, it rarely happens. But sometimes God does that when we stand up for him. He says, therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, even fine gold. He says, Lord, I love your word. It's more priceless than the finest gold, the precious diamonds. I have one of my men in the church uh, that is, uh, he's uh, one of the leaders, one of the uh, main people in a diamond mine. And diamonds are worth, are the world's greatest and most expensive currency. They're hard currency. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, they run so much a carrot. And you know what? They are precious. But the Word of God is even more precious than any diamond. Therefore, all your precepts concerning all things. He says, listen to this. Lord, all your precepts and all the things that you teach, I consider right. I hate every false way. He says, Lord, listen, I understand that there are things that are right and there are things that are wrong. And those things which are wrong, he says, I hate. I know that they're wrong and they're not, they're not good for me. So, Lord, I'm choosing today to consider all the right things. And your word is right. And I love your word. And I need your word in my life and situation every day. I trust that that's how you feel about God's word as well. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your daily Bible class. You have yourself a great and godly day.